welcome <clears throat> to Dawn Duvall. How are y'all doing? And we are coming to you live from the Villages, Florida. It's a very hot and humid day. Uh, let me add in the load the comments so that I can see who all is popping on to visit us this evening. And I'm hot, so I'm fanning myself until we get started. <laughs> I think this is part of uh, when you get to my age. I'll be 62 in June, and the hot flash fairy has been visiting. I think it's just because it's humid. I don't think that's why, but anyways. Um, welcome, everyone. Please make sure... Hello, Miss Amy. Please make sure that you uh, say hi and where you're from. And if you will, please make sure that you share the video with your friends or family or other crafting folks, whoever. And then your name will go into a drawing to win some fun prize. Not sure what it's going to be yet. But anyways, it's um, a little bit after 7, so we'll give it a few more minutes before we get started. I have two fun fold cards that I worked on today, so we'll, um, oh my hair, um, <laughs> we'll uh, get those started. Hi Lynn, oh and I've got your stuff to put in the mail, I haven't done it yet, so I apologize. I'll put something in the mail to you tomorrow. Not that I have anything to do while we're sitting around in, you know, house arrest, <laughs> so I have been mowing yards, that's part of my retirement. So I've had to, I've had to mow two yards, our, our house here and then we have a rental house up the street, so that was two days of keeping me busy. And let's see, I put out a, I put out a new online class today, which I will put on Facebook uh, probably tomorrow. Anyway, so hello from Southwest Michigan. How are you all? Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. I will try to keep an eye on comments. And um, if I don't respond, it's only because I'm focused on what I'm trying to do. And um, I'll go back and try to respond to everybody tomorrow once I get uh, situated. Typically when I get done, it's uh, around eight o'clock here and once I get everything uploaded, then I just go sit, my husband's home on sabbatical, so I usually will go and sit with him. So I've been in my stamp room most of the day today, um, working on um, this, trying to get this put together and I finished an online class, so I've been trying to avoid him a little bit, only because he just, uh, I'm sure y'all are feeling the same thing. <laughs> you gotta figure out a way to, we have to figure out a way to stay busy. But um, anyways, um, I have two fun folds uh, tonight, and I'm sure you've seen them, but I just like doing these fun folds. I think they're fun. And um, I think what I'm going to do next week, and I'll put this out on, um, I'll put it out on a Facebook post, but what I'm thinking I'm going to do would be something different, is then y'all can join in. I think I'm going to do a, um, like a one sheet wonder, and I'm going to post a template and then um, we can spend maybe an hour together and everybody can uh, download the template, you know, like the day before. I'll put it up there here in the next day or so. And then I thought it'd be kind of cool because you could, you could pick some paper that, you know, we tend to hoard our pretty paper, right? So you can pick a sheet of paper and we're going to cut it to 6 by 12 and we want two different uh, coordinating papers. And then um, we're going to use the template. You want to get some cardstock and then we're going to... Um, how about just we'll cut cut it up together and we'll make um, like 11 or 12 cards, however many cards the template makes. So I think that might be something fun. If you don't want to participate, you can watch, um, but I don't think it'll take that long. So anyways, all right, let's see. We'll give it, well, it's already after, it's eight after seven. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to scooch my chair up a little bit. Pardon me for um, moving all around. I'm going to turn the uh, camera down and show you the first card that we're gonna make. I don't even know what the name of this thing. If y'all know what the name is, pass it on to me and let me know. I've gotta make sure I've got it folded right so that it looks right. I think that's right. Give me a second, you're gonna see my finger, but I'm just gonna click my camera so I can get it down. Okay, there we go. We're gonna be using the Ornate Garden. I love that suite, and um, for those of you that may not be aware, of this suite is gonna be in the new catalog that comes out in June. And they've opened it up for the month of April for customers to be able to order this suite. So, um, and it's, I mentioned this before, it's two, two stamp sets. It's kind of like the, the uh, Painted Poppies one. Uh, it's two stamp sets, one with all pictures, and this is this one. Okay, hang on a minute. Let's see what we can get in here. There we go. I guess my Wi-Fi is not cooperating. Okay, so as you all have seen before, sorry about that. This is the Ornate. Um, one of the this is the ornate style which has all the stamps and this has coordinating dies and then this is the one that has all the words 
Um, and then this has, um, it's just, and this has got some dies as well. So this is what we're going to be using on the first card, as well as some of the designer series paper, which is absolutely stunning. So anyways, the whole point of that was that this project, I mean, this stamp set, you can order it through the end of this month, and then you will not be able to get it until June when the um, catalog goes live. And then one other, uh, one other thing too is, um, they've updated the clearance rack, and I'm sure you've seen it on everybody's um, website because we've all been posting it. They've added a whole bunch of new dies and stamps and stuff, and uh, a lot, of, some of it, or probably a lot of it, is up to 60% uh, off. So just wanted to let you know that as well. I'm going to try to put my code in here. Let me see if I can move. If you decide to, you want to place an order and you don't have a demonstrator, um, I would love to earn your business. I'm going to try to organize this so we can see it. Um, if I can help you with anything, you have questions regarding anything, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you. I'm going to try to slide that out of the way. All right, so this is the card that we're making. I'm not sure what it's called. It does fit inside to inside a regular envelope, but it opens like that. So if y'all know what this is called, let me know. I'm going to go in here. Give me a second. I'm going to refresh these comments because they may have gotten they may have gotten frozen apparently when we started off and things weren't going as usual but you know hey <laughs> that's what we have here in the Duval household okay so this is the card that we're gonna be making and this is um, the paper from the ornate uh, gardens uh, what I think it's called the ornate garden specialty designer series paper and I love these daisies now did you all know that one of the colors in here which you probably do um, probably heard about it one of these is a new in color and it's called bumblebee and I'm thinking, and I don't know, I could be wrong. I'm thinking, I don't know if it'd be this light one, but it might be this yellow. Because that kind of looks a little bit darker than, it's not quite crushed curry and it's not daffodil delight. So I'm thinking that that might be the new color. I bring that up because next this next month's paper pumpkin that if you sign up for has no color. And they're calling it um, something no color, no in, something in color. So you're going to get four of ink spots of the new in color so we get to, we get a sneak peek of what the new in color is going to be that will come out in January I mean June so isn't that exciting anyways all right so we're going to go ahead and make this card I don't know what it's called but it's some kind of fun fold <laughs> and then you turn it over and then you can write your sentiment on the back and I stamped a couple of the um, flowers from the stamp set and then I just did a little bit of uh, water coloring with the aqua pen which I will do because I want to show you all how to do that in case you don't one thing, um, also a tool tip, which you may not be aware of, your aqua painter, it's perfect for envelope. You don't have to lick your envelopes. L use your aqua painter. I use it on the flap where the glue is and just rub it on there and fold it shut. That way you don't have to put your germs on it and you don't get all that nasty gluey taste. So another tool tip for the aqua painter. So what I'm gonna do today, now I've went ahead and cut everything. I'm gonna use a piece of mint macaron. I'm gonna move this card out of the way for just a moment. I am gonna pull in my paper trimmer because I do want, whoops, I'm just throwing paper on the floor. I do want to score this. I've already cut the paper, but I do wanna get it scored. So um, let me get my directions out. I wanna make sure. Oh, and then while I'm talking and getting my directions, uh, the person's name that I drew about an hour ago from last week's um, video was Amy Banks from Norfolk, Virginia. So Amy, um, I have your address. I will get you something in the mail here uh, by tomorrow or the next day. Okay, so we are, uh, so we're going to start out with a uh, four and a quarter by nine and a half piece of cardstock. Let me open up my arm because we're going to do a bunch of scoring. And this is going to be pretty easy. I will put the measurements on the video once I get done, but we'll go ahead and um, I'll walk you through what the, what the scoring is. So this is four and a quarter by nine and a half. And I'm going to use mint, uh, mint macaron. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to score at uh, one and three quarters. So I'm going to, bear with me one second, I'm going to switch this around because my camera is on this side and I'm going to have a hard time looking, um, trying to get this in the way. So let me pull this up. There we go. All right, so we're going to start out and score at, um, I'm going to do it this way, one and three quarters. So I'm going to come over to one, I'm sorry, it's one and a quarter. So we've got one and then there's our quarter mark. So we're going to go ahead and line it up at one and a quarter. And I know this is a little backwards for me. I hope y'all can see that. I'll move it over in just a minute. So we're gonna score that at one and a quarter. 
let me slide this over slide it down there we go all right so one and a quarter and then we're going to move it over to one and three quarters so we're going to slide that over to one and three quarters and this is how we're getting that like accordion effect so we're going to slide that to one and three quarters then move over to two and a quarter so we're going to get two and a quarter right there so we're going to do two and a quarter and then we'll move that to two and three quarters are y'all getting the gist of how this is working two and three quarters and then once I get past this, I'm going to have to move it two and three quarters. And then we're going to move all the way, and I'm going to bring this down. Hang on a second. My desk, I only have so much room here, so bear with me, because I've got my camera set up differently. Let me move this down so we can get this in here. I don't think I'll be able to get my thing. Hold on a minute. Let's flip it around. Okay, we're going to do it this way. There we go. All right, so now we are going to move this down to, what did I say? All right, we just did... Hang on a minute. I gotta get my notes back. All right, so we just did um, two and three quarters. Now we're gonna move it over to six and three quarters. So let me get my little um, Duma Flotchy there. We're gonna do six and three quarters. So that's gonna be right about there. Six and three quarters. All right, so we're gonna score that. And you know what? I got that in the wrong spot. Hang on a minute. Yeah, no, that's right. Six and three quarters. Okay, and then six and three quarters. We're gonna jump to seven and a quarter so we're going to do seven and a quarter uh, do, 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 right about there so we've got seven and a quarter there and then we're going to come over to seven and three quarters so we're going to move that to seven and three quarters and then the last one that we're going to do is eight and a quarter so we've got eight and then we're going to move it over to um, eight and a quarter and we're going to score that right there okay so the measurements again are one and a quarter one and three quarters two and a quarter two and three quarters six and three quarters seven and a quarter seven and three quarters and eight and a quarter got all that okay so then we're going to fold so what we want to do is we're going to fold this one down or fold it so this is going to be where we put our base um, card let me get my bone folder here so we're going to fold that and I'm going to start here so this one is going to lay flat so we want this one to go down and then I'll, I'll burnish these in just a minute and there's a score line there so this is down so that's going to be a valley so this one's going to come up to be a mountain so we're going to get that one over let me flip it this way so we're going to make this one into a mountain and then we're gonna fold this one down into a valley. So let me get that, there we go. Once we get them going, they'll work. So that's the valley, and then this is our, our um, valley and our mountain valley. Fold that in there, fold this one. All right, so we've got this one folds up, that one folds down, and then we're gonna fold this one in like that, okay? So that's how it's gonna fold till we get our little accordion type look. All right, then I'm gonna go back and burnish these so let me do that real quick. So I just want to make sure that we get them flattened down and make sure that they're, you know, even on your paper too. Because sometimes when we do our scoring and then try to fold them, they're a little bit off. And then I'll just go back over this one as well. And then we'll do the next one. So we know this one's going to go back because this is my, um, this is going to be the front of our card. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to find my score. So this one we're going to fold this way. Make sure I've got it. So my paper, my fold is off just a little bit. So let's go ahead and make it straight. So we're gonna make that one even. Let me get the bone folder here. All right, so that one's even. So now we're gonna do our valley, and then we'll come back and do that, and then we'll come back and do that. So there we go. All right, so let me just burnish these real quick. This is an easy card, actually. It looks harder than it is, but it's not. Um, once, you, once you get these folds down, and this one's a little crooked, so give me just a second. I can see right here this little guy is not folded correctly so let me get him he's a little bit too much on this side so let me get him even that way it, it will hang it will fold right okay so that's what our card is going to look like without having any paper now what we could have done which i didn't do but um we're, we should have we could have put our paper on there first and then folded it it's whichever you're more comfortable with it doesn't matter so now your next, what you're going to do is you're going to cut some designer paper and you're going to cut one uh, piece of D uh, DSP and that's going to go right here and this is four and an eighth 
by three and seven eighths. So that's four and an eighth by three and seven eighths. So we're gonna lay this on here. I thought the mint macaron would look nice because it's got that little bit in the background. So I thought that'd be something a little different. And this is gonna bring it almost to the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down and add my adhesive. So let me get that out. So we're gonna go ahead and attach that. I'm gonna use my favorite glue, <laughs> my liquid glue. Uh, so we'll go ahead and attach that on there. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, this is really pretty. I was going to um, finish some of these with a little bit of color, but when I did it earlier today, I didn't like the way it looked. So I thought, nah, I'm not gonna do that. So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, we're gonna show the daisy. So I'll just make it like I did on that one, but you can change it. If you wanna put your paper different ways, let me get in the camera. Um, if you want to turn your paper different ways, then, you know, by all means, you can do that. If you want to flip some upside down, I may do that on this one. We may, we may put these two, make them different. All right, so we've got that laid there. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to cut two strips of, an, of your designer paper, and you can use the same one and flip it over however you want to do it. And you're going to cut two of these, and they are at one and an eighth by four and an eighth. So one and an eighth by four and an eighth and you want two of these, okay? And these are the ones that are gonna go on the outside pieces right there. We're not gonna glue those yet. And then we're gonna cut six, six strips at three eighths of an inch by four and an eighth. So these are really tiny, three, uh, three eighths of an inch by four and an eighth. These are gonna go on all these little uh, folds. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these there. Now I'm going to leave the daffodil showing and then I think what I'm gonna do is flip on the outside piece to show this gold, which I really think it's pretty, this gold um, like flower paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these um, on these little um, side pieces right here. And they just, you know, they just line up and get them right inside. So it's really easy to do actually, because you're, um, you've already got the folds there. It probably would have been easier if I had um, did this before I folded it, but that's okay. I always have to make things hard, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so, and these aren't lining up. Now, if you're real particular and you want your paper to line up with your design, then uh, when you cut it, just pay attention to how you cut it so you can put them together that way. I'm not too concerned, because I don't, I don't know if anybody is really gonna pay attention. They may, I'm not gonna worry about it. So, that's how I roll. Okay, all right, so we're just gonna add our other piece right here. I could, I tried playing with one of these um, on the one that I made previously, trying to get them to line up, but when I cut them, obviously I didn't pay attention when I cut them to keep track of them. So let me just hold that there for a second so I can get him. One thing I do like about this glue though is you do get to move it around, even though I hate it when it gets on my fingers. All right, and this one, I think I'm gonna go ahead, uh, let's go ahead and add, yeah, let's go ahead and add this one. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna flip this one around just for something different, okay? So, whoops, about to lose my other piece of paper that I need. So we'll just add this on there. I've gotta figure out a way. You know, I've got a corner desk that um, when I redid my stamp uh, room this last year, um, I bought some Ikea furniture and I have two corner desks and this is one of the corner desks that I'm using, but I swear, you think, I should have more room, right? But I think it's because I got my uh, umbrella light behind us, so it's on the table um, to help with the lighting. <laughs> so um, I'm in this little boxed area. I guess if I got some of this stuff out of the way, but I feel like I need it, so I thought I'd share that. All right, so we're gonna do the little sides over here as well, and I'm using my craft mat. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you buy one. They're only $5, but they're um, very nice to have, and they keep your a table from getting glue all over everywhere. All right, so we're just gonna lay that there and hold it down. So you can see, it. this is pretty easy. It looks a lot more difficult, you know. At least that's what I thought when I saw the, the card, and I can't remember who I got this from. Oh, I think it was Mary, uh, I think it's uh, Mary Nabe, I mean, maybe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, it's K-N-A-P-E, I think is her name. Um, I saw where she had posted this card and I just absolutely loved it. I don't think I've seen one like this. If I have, it's been a long long time ago, I don't remember. But anyways, okay. So now we're putting our sixth, uh, sixth one down and you can see how it's going pretty fast. And uh, we'll put this one on here and we'll put that right about there and get him lined up. And um, again, that looks pretty nice. And really, when you look at it, you don't really, you don't really notice. Well, I guess you do notice there, but it's okay. 
It's okay. Whoops, I almost put glue on the wrong side. So we're gonna cover up the pretty daisy. I hope our daisy um, punch and everything carries over, especially having this paper. I love that and I haven't used it as much as I should. I did use the original daisy that came out a couple years ago, uh, but the, the medium one, I haven't used as much as I should. And I really like that. I really like that stamp. So, okay, so there we go with our card. I'm just gonna let that sit for just a minute. Now, what I did is I cut, um, the colors in here are early espresso too. So I cut a strip of early espresso that is one inch by three and seven eighths. So it's one by three and seven eighths. And I'm gonna attack that down right here. And I'm just gonna do this, I'm gonna make the card just like that one, except for I've just turned it around a little bit. So let's get this guy down there. And I'm putting my adhesive, my Tombow or liquid glue on. So we're just gonna lay that right there. See how easy it's coming together? It comes together pretty fast. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp using Early Espresso, and I'm gonna stamp the small flower. Let me move that over there. And then we're gonna cut out, oops, I got too much ink on that one. Hang on a minute. Let me move my stuff out of the way so I can get to my chamois. I've tapped too hard, but chamois comes in handy. All right, so we just want to do a little tappy. All right, so I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna stamp this. Let me get in here so you can see me. So I'm just gonna stamp the flower here. We're gonna cut this out in a circle. And we're gonna use the one and a half inch circle punch. And then the next thing we're gonna do, okay, so I've taken the words from the other stamp set, which is the um, Ornate Thanks, that has all the wording, and this is a cursive. Now the wording says, and it's all one piece, right? So it says, you made my day. Now you can do one of two things. You can color with your stamp and write markers, because I'm gonna do, I'm cutting it in half. But since it's, I can do it, I'm just gonna lay it on my ink pad and I can see through, that's one thing nice about the, um, the photo, photopolymer, is I can see where the edge of my word is. Let me see if I can zoom you in some. Hang on a second, let me see if that works. So I'm just gonna lay it on here and I've got the um, you made, I've got the E right on the edge of the ink, pa ink pad so I can get some ink on that, right? So I've got my ink and I'm gonna place that right about here, okay? And then I'm gonna clean that off and then I'm gonna come back, hang on a second. Now I wanna stamp off on my paper to make sure I don't have any ink. And then I'm going to um, uh, ink up my day, which is right here. So as you can see, I'm gonna lay down uh, my into the ink pad and just get the uh, right on the edge there and get some ink on that. And I know this is a little bit different. You could use the pencil, but I just thought it was easier. Okay, so I've got my day stamped. So I'm gonna stamp that right here Okay, and hopefully I've left room. The other one that I did, I actually cut the circle out first so I wouldn't have to, um, so I knew exactly where to stamp it. So sometimes you can do, I tell my customers not to do that, but in this case, it might make sense. So we'll see how it goes when I go to, um, to cut that out. So we'll see. All right, and I'm probably too far over, but that's all right, we're gonna, we'll figure out and make it work. So here we go. All right, so we will, here we go. So I'll pop that out, all right. And um, then I'm going to take, now this is where your aqua painters come in handy. So I'm going to take Old Olive and pull the, um, and always before you, you know, you make sure your aqua painter's clean before you stick it in your ink. So wipe it on some paper. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit of ink from the lid. And you can push your ink, uh, let me show you. The new pads are a little bit more, are harder, but the older ink pads, if you still have the old ones, you can push in the center and then it will disperse ink right there. If not, you can just take your ink re um, ink refill and just put a tiny drop in there and then you can pull from that. So I'm gonna pull in some ink and just, just a little bit and I'm just gonna go in here. Now these aqua painters come in uh, two, a set of two and they've got a larger brush and a thinner brush. So just keep that in mind. So in this case, I'm not even sure which one I have. This might be the bigger one. So all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of color there. It's nothing, nothing, um, you know, it's not rocket scientists, right? A rocket science. So now I'm gonna pull in the crushed curry and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna clean my uh, aqua painter to make sure 
that there's no um, ink on it so I don't transfer it and then I'm just gonna color in and I might leave some white spots which is fine and then I'm just gonna and this is I'm using plain whisper white so I don't want to put a lot because I don't want it to peel and I think that looks good so we're gonna clean this off all right so let's shut this one up we are gonna use this again in just a moment and then these gold um, gilded gems they're um, yeah, I guess they're gold we're gonna put one of these inside I'm gonna take one of the little baby ones and we're gonna put that right in the center of our flower okay all right so that's what we're gonna do with that so let me move this out of the way for just a second now I'm gonna go ahead and attach this with dimensional so let me pull my card back in and it's a very simple card but I think it looks really pretty not because I made it just because I think it is um, but anyway, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna put two dimensionals on here and pull those off. Let me get the other one. All right, and then I'm just gonna attach that right here. Okay, and then there's our finished card. Now I'm gonna do the back in just a minute. So there's our card. And then on the back side, we've got a piece of Whisper White. Well, we did, hang on a minute. And this is, going to be cut the same as your DSP so it's um, what did I say oh uh, four and an eighth by three and seven eighths so all I'm going to do on this is I just want to stamp the inside with that flower again just to give it um, just make it look pretty I'm just going to do two flowers just like that one in the top and one in the bottom you don't have to do that but I sometimes like to just kind of dress it up. So I want to make sure I've got the right side there, and I do. So we'll just go ahead and lightly tap our early espresso, and I'll just stamp one up here in this corner, and then I'm gonna stamp one down in this corner. All right, and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna do our watercoloring again. And this time, what I'm going to do, whoops, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take, let me make sure my, um, Gotta find my paper so I can clean off my aqua painter. Um, I'm gonna just take a little bit of the early espresso, and I'm just gonna since I don't want to put the uh, dot the uh, gilded gem on the inside, I'm just gonna put a little brown right there in the center, and just using the tip and just kind of doing a little tap, doing a little tap dance. Okay, so that's that, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna come back and color in these two flowers. Um, whoops, didn't mean to open that all the way. We need that. All right, so I'm gonna clean off, and now we're pulling the yellow again, our crushed curry, and again, I'm just gonna lightly, just all it takes is one swipe to get that uh, yellow on there. And I don't wanna do anything, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white showing, which is fine. All right, and then we're gonna clean that one off, push this one away, and then we'll open up our old olive, and we'll just grab a little bit of that for our leaves. And and then you can also, if you don't already, um, and I'm sure probably most of you all do, is make sure you decorate the outside of your envelopes. And that could be either by using the designer paper and covering up your envelope flap or stamp a big a flower or something on the inside. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and use my snail because if they're going to write on this, I don't want... The liquid, um, the liquid glue to be, you know, leave um, lumps or whatever. So, all right. So we've got this ready to put down, and we'll just lay that right in here, and it fits perfectly. And there you go. There's this card. Isn't that pretty? I just love this little fun fold. I just wish I knew what the name of it was, but I'll figure it out. I'll find out. Let y'all know. So let me know what you think about that. I'm sure y'all have probably made this card before. Um, I'm going to, as I'm talking to you, I'm moving my stuff around so I can get the next um, project out. So we're going to move on to another fun fold. So let me grab, grab that one. Now this is a Dutch fold and I just saw this one the other day and I really, really, really liked it. So that's what we're going to be making. And let me move this card out of the way. Excuse me for my arms. I'm reaching. And this is the one that I made earlier, but the one we're going to make now is going to be using the um, sailing home stamp set. So let me um, let me get that stuff out here. Give me just a second, and let me show you what the stamp looks like. I'm sure you all have seen this as well. Let me get all. Now I've already cut, pre-cut, and um, everything again to try to keep time down. I know last week we were on here for over an hour, and I 
Um, appreciate y'all's patience, but I don't like spending that much time. So, anyways, let me, um, I don't need, I don't think I need my paper trimmer. I think I've got everything cut. So, this I use the Magnolia. You know, I haven't used this stamp set in so long, and I've got all this um, beautiful paper, so I thought, well, this would be cute to do. So, this is a double Dutch card, and it really, I wasn't sure how to do it, but once I saw um, how it worked, let me get over in the camera. There we go. There we go. So, um, it's very simple to do. I thought it was going to be much harder, but it's not. So, I uh, color covered this with the Designer Series paper, and then you open it up, and there's the gate, and then I stamped inside. Uh, using that little squirrely part of the stamp, really beautiful, and thinking of you. And then I uh, stamped and colored in the Magnolia, and then popped that up. I used the um, the Stampin' Blends. I used Mossy Meadow and Petal Pink, and just highlighted that on the card and um, put it together. And that's how you, it's really simple. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the sailing, the sailing one, the ship. So, let me move this out of the way. I don't think I need that right now. All right, give me just a minute. I'm going to show you the stamp set. And this one I bought, and I hope that this one may carry over as well because I've not used this. I have not given the stamp set hardly any love whatsoever. So, this is the Sailing Home set that we're going to be using this evening. I'm going to use the uh, Lighthouse. That's going to be my locking mechanism to hold the card shut. And then here are the dies that you can, if you buy this, I assume it's still sold as a bundle, but you've got uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll think it's eleven. Let me think. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eleven dies. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if this is water. I'm not quite sure. If y'all have used this set and you know what that's used for, please let me know. <laughs> I can figure out everything else, but I'm not sure if that has something to do with a boat. It may be, I don't know, but anyways. So we're using this and um, the set. So I've already cut out the lighthouse, but I'm gonna stamp it so you can see me uh, do a little bit, bit of stamping as well. So we're gonna be using a Knight of Navy cardstock. And let me get all my pieces out, and then I'll give you the measurements. Um, give me one second here. Okay, all right, so we are going to, let me find my measurement sheet. <coughs> Pardon me. Let me get some water. Okie doke. All right. So it's Knight of Navy. And we have our uh, card base. <coughs> Pardon me. Is um, four, and you'll love this, four and three sixteenths by nine inches. So four and three sixteenths. Now, if y'all aren't familiar with, three, with what the sixteenths are, you know, I didn't even know what eights were until I became a mortgage loan officer 20 some years ago. <clears throat> and all of our pricing, pardon me, was an eighth. So I learned real quick what an eighth was because that affected interest rates and how I got paid. <laughs> so anyways, let me get in here to the camera. Whoa, hang on. Let me see. Which way am I going? Here we go. See if I can get up here. All right. So all of these little tiny marks right there. Do you see that? Whoops. Let me get back over here. There we go. This little mark right here, that's a 16th. Okay. And then the one next to it is an eighth. And then another sixteenth, and then you've got your quarter, right? So you've got one, so you count the, the lines. So one, two, and that would be three. So that would be three sixteenths. All right. So that little one is a sixteenth. This is an eighth, a sixteenth, a quarter. And then that's a sixteenth, an eighth, a sixteenth, and then that's a half. All right. So that's that's how they measured it. All right. And I got this from. Um, this I copied from Lisa Curcio, 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 I think is how you say it. She's in Florida, somewhere down south, if I'm not mistaken. So four and three sixteenths, four and three sixteenths by nine inches, and then we're going to score it five and a half. Okay, and then when we fold it over, this is the base, starting the base of our card. All right, and then the next piece from the scrap that we've cut off, we're then going to cut a two inch strip which is going to be two by eight and a half. I know it's dark. Two by eight and a half, and you're going to score each end at two and an eighth. So I would just put it in the trimmer, score two and an eighth, and flip it around in two and an eighth, okay? That's all we have to do for that. Now that is what, and this is what I found fascinating, this is what makes your gatefold. So what we're going to do is we're going to put adhesive on here, and then we're going to line this up and make sure that it's even, and then this will fold in, and if you've got it right, 
then it matches, and then you're not even going to really notice that because it's the same color as your cardstock. Let me get it. See, you can't even see. There you go. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere that now, and I'm going to use, let's use our liquid glue because I think that will be a little bit more forgiving if for some reason uh, we have a little bit of issue trying to get this thing um, attached, okay? So that will give us a little bit of time to move it around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger, if you can see, I'm just going to put my finger on the edge of the card so I can feel where the edge is. All right, and that's just gonna help me hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna lay this down and make sure I get it centered so that it's even. And then I put my finger there to hold it so it doesn't go past that mark. And then I'm gonna push this down. Hopefully we've got it in there. And then while that glue, see I can just push just a little bit and I'm gonna hold it down for just a second. So when I do that, and then it folds over. So the one thing I would encourage you is to be careful when you do the scoring so because this may affect when you place it onto the card so you may have to go back and just adjust this just a little bit okay all right so that's how we make the gatefold and that's pretty simple isn't it all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of designer series paper and I'm going to use um, from this coordinating DSP the lighthouse uh, paper and this is going to be cut at uh, dun, 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 hang on um, this is cut at three and a quarter by four and an eighth. So that's going to be three and a quarter by four and an eighth. And I'm going to attach it right like that. Okay. So again, I'm going to use my adhesive and I hope you enjoy these cards. Please let me know. I'm sure you all have made these. I might be the only one that's in the dark <laughs> about that, but, um, I just find it, you know, I love making cards and you know, sometimes you get tired of making the same, same designs, you know, either turn the card one direction, get it a different direction or whatever. So I just love doing these fun folds because I think they're fun. And um, bear with me, I gotta turn this up so I can see and slide this up a little bit. See, it's already starting to adhere and I think it's a little crooked. And I've got some glue there, but that's all right. We will, um, maybe I cut it wrong. Um, I'll get my little adhesive remover and take that off. Okay, so that's our base there. Now we're gonna cut um, two little squares of coordinating paper. And these are cut, and I did these on the opposite, um, the another piece of paper that's in that package. And these are cut at uh, one and seven eighths squared. And what that means, it's one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. So in that case, we're gonna lay it on here, and it should be almost, uh, and I've gotta check to make sure which way it goes. So you can tell it's gonna go this way. So it's gonna be right to the edge, and it's dark, again, I know it's dark, so it's gonna cover up that square. So we're gonna go ahead and add that nail. We'll put that on there. And again, I thought, you know, when I look at these cards, I thought they were so, you know, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so difficult. And it really was, it's really pretty easy. So I'm just gonna lay that on here and place that on my little square right here. And if I've got any um, overhanging, I'll go ahead and trim that off, but I think I should be good. Yep, I think we're good. All right, and then we'll do this side as well. So let me go ahead and put some adhesive on here, put my Tombow favorite white sticky glue. And um, can y'all notice my fingernails are not done? I've had, you know, I'm sure we're all in the same boat, right? Can't get my nails done, and I have acrylic nails, but my nails have grown out underneath, but I've always had very thin paper. If you looked at my nails, my real nails, they would just break. So I've always had um, acrylic. And I took the polish off the other day because it was looking right pitiful. And I start, I cut them down and I started filing them, but you can see, look at this growth right here. By the time I get back to go get my nails, he'll be putting a whole new uh, set on me. <laughs> so, okay, so there's our um, squares, all right? So it's coming together, look at that. Isn't that, isn't that cool? So we'll put that like that. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna have a piece of white card stuff that will go on in the center and this is what and it's gonna be, um, I think it's four, yeah, four by five and a quarter. It's our normal size. So we'll do some stamping on that in just a minute. And then um, I am going to, let's see, what are we gonna do here? We are going to, oh, I'm gonna stamp. I mean, I'm gonna, even though I've cut one out, I'm gonna stamp it anyways, just so that y'all can see. And then in the die, and I'm using Knight of Navy, so let me move this out of the way so y'all can see here. 
I'm going to stamp the lighthouse. And it's really, I love the way that the, uh, they stamp when they come out. You know, they just are so pretty. And so this is what the lighthouse is going to look like if you haven't used it. So it's really got the look um, with the distressed and everything. And then in the dies, let me put this over here. And the dies there is the lighthouse, uh, which we're, I've already cut out for you. And then I cut this out. It's a little banner, and I use the word thanks, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stamp it again, which I'm going to stamp it after it's cut, which I always recommend don't do that. It's easier to cut it after the fact so that you can line it up. Okay, so um, let's go ahead. We're going to use this as our locking mechanism. So when I put this on here, I'm going to place it like that. So that way it holds this section down right here. And we're going to pop this up on dimensionals. But I'm going to go ahead and attempt to stamp the thanks right here on my, um, and this is a stitched. I don't know if you all noticed that. Um, it's stitched, if you can see it. It's got little stitching right around that banner. And you know, when you, you forget that we have this stuff, but you know, when you go back and look at your stamps or some of the dies that you have, this is perfect if you want to have a little saying and it's got stitching on it, so it makes it really, you know, nice. And it doesn't have to be used just for this set, right? So we can use our smaller words with the different dies that we have. And let's see if I can get this stamp straight. Yay, we got it done. Okay, so we're going to close up our blue. Um, I don't really want to do the birds. I think I'll just leave the inside left blank. And then that way um, I can just write my own sentiment for whatever. I'm going to send this to somebody for a thank you. So that's what I'll do. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my adhesive, of my snail, and attach the card. Oops. Ah, my snail's picking up on my paper. That's not good. Look at that. It's so hard. It's sticking. Hold on a minute. Well, maybe, I won't, maybe I'm pushing. Oh, I see. It's a little sticky here. Isn't that something? Have y'all had this happen before? Now, do you all know that if you get snail... And it doesn't, it starts acting up. Do you know that you can call Stampin' Up and they will reimburse, they'll um, give, send you a, one out at no cost? I had a while, it was a couple years ago in class, I, I had about four or five snails that kept rewinding themselves going backwards and it would not work. I'm going to put a little bit of this down here, which won't affect the writing. Um, and I called them and said, do you want me to send these back to you? And they said, no, nope, we'll send them out. And they sent me a whole five new um, things back. So that was really nice of them. But I was frustrated because I was trying to, I, uh, if customers are for the first time you, uh, joining me, then I let them use my snail for the first time at no cost. But then the next time, they have to bring their own or they pay a dollar to use my snail. Well, that particular night, a couple people were using it, and it just kept rolling backwards and backwards and backwards, and it was enough to drive you crazy. So, okay. So now we're going to add some dimensionals. So I'm going to put two on my thanks because we're going to put them this one at the top. But I'm, I want to do that. I'm going to add this after I put my lighthouse. Okay, so now what we want to do is we have to keep in mind when we attach this, we want to make sure that we don't go below right here with our dimensionals. Okay, so I'm just going to place dimensionals. See that little notch? I'm just going to go from that point up. That way I know I'm safe in um, putting this. So I'm just going to put three on here. That way it doesn't affect my closing mechanism. Push down with your thumb, pull off your backings. See how easy they come off? And then you find these things all over the house. I know, I know we all do. I found them in the dog, <laughs> in my shirt, on the floor, they're always on the floor. Okay, so this one, we're gonna shut our card and then we're gonna place this down and I know that it's gonna be above that, um, where that little anchor thing is. So I want to make sure I don't get that to where it's going to close. And I'm going to place that right there. Make sure it's straight. Oops, that doesn't look like it's straight, does it? But it's in the water. And there you go. So then when you get ready to open it, see that holds it down, and then it will open up like that. All right, and then we're going to attach our sentiment, and then we will be done for the evening. So um, please make sure that you uh, leave comments if you haven't already. And I apologize if I haven't been seeing them. Um, and if you would like, and I'm going to put the thanks, whoops, I'm going to put the thanks up here in the corner. I'm just going to put it at a little bit of an angle. So make sure that you share my videos. The more I can uh, reach out to other people and share my love of crafting, um, as we all do, then share the love. So there's the one card that we made. I love the, I love the nautical set, and I really 
disappoints me that I have let this thing sit there, which I am definitely a beach person. I love the ocean, I love the beach, and I love anything that has to do with beach. And then here are our flowers, our daisy with the ornate. Isn't that cute? I really, I think I like it with the, um, the gold. So tell me which card you like. If you have one over the other, let me know which is your favorite. And I think that is it for now. Thank you again for stopping by. I appreciate you um, taking time out of your busy schedule to watch my craziness in my um, stamp pad. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. And I think that I would like to do the um, the One Sheet Wonder. And we'll, I'll send out, a, um, I'll post a uh, document that will have what we're going to do. And if y'all want to join along, we'll just cut cards, cut the um Cards, uh, the designer series paper, have our card stock ready to go. Well, we'll just put them together. What do y'all think about that? Okay, I have talked long enough. It's five minutes to eight. Again, thank you so much and have a great week. Stay safe. Make sure you wear your mask and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye now.